That's right, everybody. It's another football episode of Tap Outs and Touchdowns. Hope you're enjoying this lovely Thursday wherever you are. It's your guy, Bully Rye. Um, the show's going on the YouTube channel, but I didn't I didn't require the uh, the football show co-host to come on camera today. Um, he, he had his, I, we called it his facial debut last week, but look, he's here anyway. Banker Bill is with us once again to talk some more football. Bill, how you doing today, bud? I'm good, man. Um, what was that about? That was it. And by the way, I, I did enjoy when you say the guy, Bully Rye, you point at yourself like, yeah, let's yeah, go. That's like, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. But I'm yeah. good, man. Excited to talk some football. Yeah, listen, um, there was a guy, wrestler uh, named Rob Van Dam, and his his calling card was he would go into the ring and they would say his name and he would do the point, you know, point at Rob Van Dam and everybody <laughs> in the crowd would do it too. So, I, you know, it's, it's one, of, one of my things that I, that I try to do for myself. Fair enough. Um, I'm down with it. Hopefully, hopefully you all enjoyed the uh, WrestleMania review this week. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed uh, getting to see me on Drop the Mic, uh, where I talk more WrestleMania, uh, you know, aftermath, the purchase of WWE by the parent company, Endeavor. Uh, Bill, I know you don't care about wrestling, but have you been paying attention to any of this stuff this week? Does this have any effect on you to know that the UFC and the WWE will be merging into a a one centralized combat sport and entertainment company? I, no I find I actually I find it comical that you call the wrestling combat sports. I I call it more like soap opera sports or I don't know theater sports. Listen, and I know guys get hurt from time to time, and that you know we've we you and I talked about it. There are a few you know people that have passed away or want one, um, and that's bad. But I mean, people pass away walking their dogs, so it's like you know it's just yeah it is. I'm sorry. No, listen, I hate. I hate. I know you love. <laughs> listen and listen, listen. And in fairness, like the UFC is the combat sports part of it. Um, it is. You know, it's hundred percent. Um, it's cool. It, it's cool. Honestly, in all honesty, um, I, I didn't mean to crap on your on your uh, your, your, listen, your question. Um, it's cool. Actually, I have no problem with it. Honestly, I, I think it's a good thing. I think it's pretty exciting for everyone that that they're going to merge both. I, I think it's nice to see how much money is behind both. That's pretty cool. I think the unfortunate part is, or how they're going to, I don't know how they're going to work this out. UFC or uh, UFC fighters tend to not get paid a ton, not like boxing did back in the day when Don King was a promoter, you know, especially on pay-per-views and things like that. They do get decent paychecks, but for what they do, I mean, that's pretty brutal, right? Yeah. Um, but WWE fighters, they seem to get paid a lot. So how are they going to work that out? I, I, I find that interesting to have that under the same entity and how that's all going to work out between the guys that are faking it and the guys that are actually, you know, beating the, I know they're fake. They're faking it. Come on. Um, um, listen, it's uh, that's one of the concerns that people have. It's something that I brought up. Like, you know, normally when you have a you have a merger, you're going to cut costs, and so yeah. um, you know a lot of the times that comes with with layoffs. And we've already seen over the last two years, WWE has done a ton of layoffs. Vince McMahon left the company, and then a lot of those people he laid off came back. Right. And so there's a lot of concern of what's what's next. But uh, nevertheless. We're not going to talk any more wrestling. We had plenty of wrestling talk this week. We are here to talk football. That's such a fan. Here to talk. Okay. Um, uh, we're going to start off this this week's show with more NFL offseason talk. We got a few topics we're going to discuss. Um, and the first one is sort of like I don't know. It shouldn't take long to discuss, but there were rumors earlier in this week that the New England Patriots were shopping Mac yeah. Jones. Um, you know, Mac Jones is the first uh, first round quarterback taken by Bill Belichick. Um, he's going to be on his, what, third or fourth offensive coordinator in as many years in the NFL this coming season. Um, I mean, take, take it for what it's worth. They had a, a defensive coach as the co-offensive coordinator in New England last year and what could possibly be one of the worst NFL coaches in the league in Matt Patricia, um, and that's coming from a Lions fan. So um, that being said, Bill, like – is, do you think there's any truth to this rumor? And if there is, like, what, what's New England doing here? Where there's smoke, there's fire, right? I mean, that's what usually happens in the NFL. We, we hear about these. and it, it came from somewhere. What's New England doing? They're not happy with Mac Jones. I mean, are, are you all that excited about it? I mean, how do you feel about Mac Jones? He hasn't been spectacular. Was he pretty good as a rookie? Yeah, but, I mean, it, we're, there's no – we haven't seen any anything beyond that. There's there's been no holy cow. This, we've seen some throws where the guy's a superstar. No, that does that hasn't happened really with Mac Jones. There's it's just kind of like a level. Here's what you got. I mean, listen. In fairness, um, 
New England doesn't have a lot of offensive weapons around them. They've got a like, mm-hmm. they don't really, they're normally slated with that with an absolute room of running backs, right? Like they've always got a bunch of running backs. They've got receivers that are so so. Even the Tom Brady years, Deion Branch was mm-hmm. made a household name. Um, Julian Edelman was named a, made an, a household name. Uh, Danny Amendola uh, left left the Rams to go to New England and had a resurgence. I mean, Randy there. Moss was made a household name. So Randy Moss. That's that's Wait. the. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> that's the exception. Randy Moss was a household name, and when he went to New England with Tom Brady, all he did was break break receiving records, break touchdowns. Sure. Yeah. Um, so uh, that being said, New England has never been known for their um, wide their, receivers, yeah, their wide receivers, yeah. offensive weapons in general. Um, and again, when tight you ends, teams, yes, tight yeah. ends, yes, they use tight ends. Gronkowski, uh, you know, Aaron Fernandez was there for a few seasons. And, yeah, Aaron Fernandez, before yeah. that, like they had good tight ends that that really played well. My concern is that you had Mac Jones playing with not a lot of talent around him uh, from a receiving standpoint. They had Hunter Henry and uh, the guy that's, that's now down in Atlanta now. And, of course, I can't say his name off the top. Um, oh, it almost came to me, and it's not there anymore. Um, but they had two tight ends, and neither one of them really paid, played a big part in the offense last season. Um, it's going to drive me nuts because he, he was a big-name tight end when he went to New England. Johnny Smith. That's who it was, Johnny mm, Smith. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you had Johnny Smith and Hunter Henry. They weren't all that utilized in the past game last year. Um, and again, you had a defensive coach coaching the offense. Like, I, I, in my opinion, I don't think they've given Mac Jones a fair shake. Um, he's he goes in there as the first round pick. You knew he's going to be starting. He won the job over Cam Newton. Cam Newton was released uh, because they were going to roll with yeah. Mac Jones. But at the end of the day, they they drafted Tom Brady in the seventh round. Nobody would have expected to him to be the greatest quarterback of all time, being a seventh-round draft pick out of the University of Michigan. Um, I Six. don't think anybody expected Mac Jones to be the next greatest of all time, um, but I still think that, that, that he deserves some time to – I mean, I say deserves some time. We were saying – we were having the same conversation about Daniel Jones uh, this past offseason and, and this past season. Um, does he get another opportunity? And I think uh, with Mac Jones at this point – um, you gotta you gotta get some consistency in that offense, whether it was OC position, uh, talent around him, um, and, and otherwise. So, listen, it makes sense that they're shopping him because there's a lot of moves happening in this offseason. Um, but I don't think that it's the right move. Um, and I mentioned that they need, need to get some, consi- some consistency around Mac Jones from an offensive playmaker's uh, standpoint, which brings me to our next discussion. Um, former offensive coordinator for the New England Patriots, um, now the head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders, um, and is going into his second year. They're going to have a new new look offense, um, in part due to the fact that all the parts they're taking from New England. So, Bill, I pose the question to you. Is Josh McDaniels the king of nepotism in the NFL? Wow. Um... I, yeah, I sprung this on. You had no idea this was coming. To when be completely you, transparent when you with have the audience, success, you had no idea. When you have success, do you try to create success somewhere else? I mean, is that what's happening? Maybe. I mean, yeah, maybe. I mean, that's amazing. If, I love it. That's that's amazing. Yeah, Make them if all. You, <laughs> if you if you if you're watching the the video feed on YouTube, um, there's a ticker going across the screen with all the former Patriot players or yeah. former players for Josh McDaniels. Listen. He tried doing the Belichick thing in in Denver, and it didn't work out. It cost him his job. Yeah, and he might he was not a be bad trying... personnel guy then, though. That was different. He's well, a little bit older, a little bit wiser. Hopefully now. Yeah, but he's a if he was a bad personnel guy then. You know, all he's doing is taking everybody that yeah. he coached with in New England. Like, it's, yeah, it's it, to me, it's not that big of a difference. Like, you can try to do and, and coach the Bill Belichick way. Um, and somehow sneak sneak out some success with Tim Tebow at quarterback, right? Um, there's an entire another thing to be said about bringing in two former quarterbacks of yours after letting go of Derek Carr. Hoyer, um, Hoyer's the backup. That's the, oh, I mean, um, yeah. I read a funny stat today, and I say funny. He's do you know Brian Hoyer's been in the league 16 years? Yeah, probably. His, Did he go his, to Michigan State? Is I'm not go, sure where he went. Where, to I, I'm going to look that up while we're sitting here. But um, in his remember. career, I think I think this current contract is a two-year uh, up worth upwards of four point five million dollars with the Raiders. Um, his career earnings, Brian Hoyer. Um, I think he started off in Cleveland as a starter for a while, and obviously he's been a journeyman ever since. 
uh, spent the last few years in New England, as I mentioned. He was uh, – Bill's fist pump tells me that he did go to Michigan State. Michigan State, yep. Um, but Brian Hoyer's career earnings in the NFL over 16 years, $37 million. That's amazing. To copy – to carry a clipboard. I just I – mean, you know, I could have carried a clipboard yeah. – yeah. Just give me the league minimum. I'll, I'll carry a clipboard and learn how it's to happened, coach. Like, it's happened for years, man. I mean, we've had multiple. Doug Peterson did that before he went into coaching. He was a lifetime backup quarterback, just carried a clipboard for however long he was in the NFL. Learned how to, you know, obviously learn offenses and, and, and has coaching chops because of how long he spent time in, you know, playing. But he never really played. He just carried a clipboard. So I'm sure he made a ton of money doing it. It's happened for years. Uh, the Dolphins are paying Matt Moore $4 million a year to back up. Um, who was uh, Tannehill at the time. And Tannehill was an Iron Man when he was down in Miami. He got hit a ton, but never got hurt until the one season that Moore had to go in and go to the playoffs with him. But he was making $4 million to sit there. Well, bonus bonus before we move on from McDaniels, um, how about Tannehill getting shot? They're looking for to get a third-round pick out of him. I mean, I know as a former Dolphin and a guy that we thought was was manageable in Tennessee. He is. Um, it, it looks like they're in full rebuild mode in Tennessee right now. Yeah, uh, with the exception of Derrick Henry, like what, what do you, what's your take on that? Tannehill is mediocre and had two Hall of Fame caliber years with Derrick Henry as their main weapon. And I am a huge Tannehill fan. I have like four Tannehill jerseys. I have a customized Tannehill ball cap. That's how big of a wow. Tannehill. Yeah, that's how big of a Tannehill fan I was when he was in Miami. But he's mediocre. He's just not. He had those two really good years. It looked like okay, we'll ride with him. And now he's had two bad years. So and and now he's getting injured. So it's hit part of his game. It never really was, but it was a little bit of the athleticism, and that's going away. So I can see uh, that them trying to move on. It's crazy though because there aren't that many quarterbacks out there to be had in the draft. So and I are, are just throwing it away. Like I don't. Their next and their next answer is Malik Willis, who clearly mm. showed that he wasn't ready last year. Um, before we move on from this, Bill uh, Josh McDaniels, king of nepotism, is this going to work? Or is this going to be another situation where he's gone after next year or the year after? Wow, that is a loaded question. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo is going to make that team better. He's good. He's a good quarterback. Is he as good? I mean, is he better than Derek Carr? Yes, probably. Yeah, he's better than Derek Carr, which is crazy. People are going to go, what? Um, he is. Go look at his stats. He wins. The dude wins. When he when the 49ers I mean, you look, look at the 49ers stats with Garoppolo, their win-loss record with Garoppolo, and then look at it without them. They're terrible without him. And they're going to be terrible again. Watch it. It's going to happen this year. I don't care what Brock Purdy tries to do because um, that arm's not going to be right this season. Uh, I mean, it's Tommy, It's basically a Tommy John injury, so that's not Oh, absolutely. Good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's not good. And if they try to play uh, Trey Lance down – is it Trey Lance? Is that, dude? That's who that is, right? Well, the, I, get, uh, I get him and Jordan Love confused. It is Trey Lance. If he comes back, that's going to be horrible. That, well, John Lynch has already said that Brock Purdy, if he's healthy enough, he's done He's just, He's done enough to deserve uh, the start to start the season. But to your point, so Tommy John surgery, I don't know if he's going to be ready. Right. Um, I personally don't think McDaniels is going to be successful as a head coach here or elsewhere i think this is i don't think so shot. either i don't think so either and I, I think him he's not even bringing in the good players like jacoby myers okay he's decent phil dorsett's garbage yeah. like he's not good at all brian hoyer's a backup like who cares like, and, i know and, it's a lot of patriots maybe it's a culture thing i don't i don't know but and they i, I mean they just brought in Damian and amandola to be an assistant wide receivers coach uh for the raiders i mean just good again, dude i guess yeah he's, he's probably a good dude but like yeah. I mean, he's he's a Matt Patricia signing away from being an absolute failure already. So, um, so it'll be interesting to see. I, you know, we've got a lot a lot of time left before uh, the the preseason for the NFL. Yeah. The draft hasn't even come yet. Um, but I'm I I'm going to call it right now. I think the Raiders finish third to last in that division again this coming season, regardless of how well or poorly they draft. And um. I like Jimmy uh, Garoppolo. I like Jimmy Garoppolo. I think that's a great signing for them. Or great was it a trade? A no, signing? they they trade? signed Garoppolo. He was a, he was a free agent because they released Derek agent. Carr and Jimmy Garoppolo. If you remember, um, he signed he amended his contract with the 49ers last year that would have made him an unrestricted unrestricted free agent mm -hmm. at the end of this this past season. I think um, there's a lot of hate tossed to Jimmy Garoppolo for no oh, reason. Uh, that's completely fair. I think Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be a very fine quarterback. I don't think McDaniels is good enough to be able to coach him the way that he yeah, played in, in, in San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, the last topic, I'm not sure if we're going to spend a lot of time on this. Um, Lamar Jackson, you mentioned it briefly last week that he 
announced on March 2nd that he was wanting to get out of Baltimore, that they weren't paying him what he deserved. Uh, more and more um, social media uh, participation by Lamar Jackson. Um, I haven't seen a whole lot this week, but there's no takers. There's no rumors about anybody coming in. Um, there's no... Uh, there's, there's no movement as far as like, there's, there's a deal in place for Lamar Jackson to go here. Um, why hasn't Lamar Jackson been moved? I would imagine they're asking too much. They, they have a high opinion. It's very odd, right? They have a high opinion of him, but they don't want him to be their quarterback. They don't want them him to be their quarterback. I don't, how can you have both? So to be fair, I think they want Lamar Jackson there. I, again, we mentioned this last week. They I want him on Deshaun, the sheet. Yeah, I, I think. Well, I think Deshaun Watson killed the um, killed the quarterback market as far as the uh, the, the money goes. I think um, Deshaun Watson uh, was obviously overpaid, oh, and Lamar Jackson see. Lamar Jackson wants more. And I think uh, I forgot the exact numbers they gave, but Baltimore offered him a lot of money with a lot of money guaranteed, and that still wasn't good enough for Lamar Jackson. It's similar to the situation with Jamal Williams in Detroit. They offered him somewhere between $5.5 and $6.5 million a year. Um, he said that he thought that the offer was disrespectful, so the Lions moved on inside David Montgomery, and then he takes less money to go down to New Orleans. Um, at some point, in your opinion, you think Lamar stays in Baltimore, or you think they, they're going to deal him, and just they're going to have to get something for him? Or does he just not play at all? Does he semi-retire because he's not going to play for a team that doesn't want to pay him what he wants? I think he stays in. I think he stays in Baltimore. I think he. I'm right I think he signs with. He, they've got the franchise tag on him. Nobody's offering anything. Nobody's looking for him. For, you know, a contract he wants too much. Whatever. And he's got no agent. Like it's a disaster. Like it, he stays in Baltimore. That's his biggest problem is that he doesn't have an agent because if Who's he talking an agent, to this guy? Like somebody needs to call him up question. and say, "What are you doing?" Like, what are you doing? Yeah, I mean, it's Play like the franchise it's one thing. Tag. So Jacoby Brissett uh, was his own agent, um, negotiated his own contract with the with the Colts a few years ago. Um, all good and well, that's fine. Um, Jacoby Brissett's not Lamar Jackson. Um, and despite a, uh, an agent taking some of your money off the top, but for negotiating on your behalf, an agent will be able to give him the right the right direction and um, and give him the right information needed in order to um, in order to, to, to do the right thing here uh, because obviously there's not there's not interest uh, from outside teams that are willing to give up what the Ravens think Lamar Jackson's worth um, so that like you said there's a conundrum the Ravens say that you're worth this much we believe this much in you that you're worth mm-hmm. this much yeah but we don't about we don't equate that to the money that you're asking for. It's right. a really weird situation. I don't think we've ever seen it before in the NFL. No. Um, if no. this was six years ago, Aaron Rodgers, and this was happening, there'd be eight teams clamoring to get Aaron Rodgers. So um, it'll be interesting interesting to see what happens with Lamar Jackson, but it should be noted um, that we are over a month into his request for the trade, and there has been no action by the Ravens and or Lamar Jackson. Uh, Bill, we're going to take our first break. When we come back, we are getting into XFL Week seven, some great games and the upset of the year took place this past weekend. So if you come back and stay tuned, uh, we're going to let you know what it was and give you the rest of the, the, of the feedback from all the XFL week seven. We'll be right back right here on Tap House and Touchdowns. All right, everybody, we are back with XFL week seven review uh, here on Tap House and Touchdowns. Your guy, Bully Rye, is, is Banker Bill likes to see me point to myself when I call myself that. Banker Bill here with us to talk about some XFL football. Um, <laughs> Bill, sorry, this is no, it's okay, man. Listen, I, I I like to I like to make people laugh with me or at me. It doesn't matter one way or the hey, other. It's all good. Um, some decent games on the slate of the XFL, and I think there's been a new team that has emerged to me as the number two team in the XFL. Ooh, that's start- exciting. Yeah, we start off in that, and that we're starting off with that team. The first game this past weekend took place between the Seattle Sea Dragons and the Arlington Renegades. Now, we did a lot of talking about Arlington last week about the fact that their offense just isn't moving, um, and Seattle Seattle likes to likes to be able to move the football. Um, Seattle gets this win, twenty four to fifteen. Bill, 
Is Seattle the number two team in the XFL at this point? No. Are they good? It's, yes. No, they're not the number. It's a tie. No, it's, I, I, there's two very good number. They're. You know what? What you know what, Ryan? The whole thing got tossed on its head this weekend. It I'm did. not even sure if the DC Defenders are the, still the, the number, number one team. team. Yeah, I don't know. I, there are three very good teams in the XFL. Then there's well, a four. There's a fourth decent one. Yeah, which we um, thought was the best one two weeks ago, three weeks. Ago. Yeah. Listen, um, if you're looking at the ticker across the screen, um, Ben DiNucci got it going on the on the, in the air again. Almost 300 yards passing, a touchdown. He did throw another interception, uh, which he is prone to do. Um, but he also had 5.8 yards per carry from the quarterback position with 52 rushing yards. Um, Morgan Ellison missed his second straight game here. Uh, they didn't seem to be able to get the ball moving on the ground. And I have been stressing it for the entire seven weeks of the season that the team that wins the running attack wins games. And that did not happen this week for a lot of a lot of games. Um, it should be noted that Morgan Ellison went to the IR with his knee injury on Monday. So he has been shut down for the season. Um, but big news in Seattle that we'll get to later on in this segment. Um, they reloaded. Yeah, they no did. Worries. In, no worries. In a big way. Morgan Ellison, although at one point he was the leading rusher in the and XFL. Looked good. It looked good doing it. He did. He did. Um, I think they're going to be in good hands. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, but Seattle, again, able to get the ball going on offense. Uh, obviously, they gave up 15 points to a struggling Arlington Renegades offense. Um, Bill, is Arlington – I don't know how to phrase this question. Is Arlington – What is Arlington? Let's just they ask stink. that question. <laughs> I was kidding. They stink. <laughs> no. I don't I don't know how they won their games. I don't. I don't. I don't they played bad teams. I think they played Vegas and Orlando when Orlando was still using Paxton Lynch and the other guy that was from Florida State that was I don't even remember his name. He was DeAndre horrific. Francois. The Francois. Yeah. He was horrific. And they were putting him in the games. Why? Because Darrell Buckley's from you know Florida State. We got to throw our Florida State guys in there. That was dumb. Now they figured out who their quarterback is. Now Orlando's dangerous. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how – I mean, Arlington is just bad. They might be the worst team in the league right now. They, I, I Listen, I can agree there. Um, Drew Plitt gets the start at quarterback here. Um, he goes, throws a little over 200 yards with the interception. Uh, Luis Perez, if you recall, was traded to Arlington over before this past weekend. He did not play. It'll be interesting to see – if he will know enough of the playbook to get some play time in this I think week. he will. I think he should this week. I think that's what we'll see. Um, their leading receiver, tight end Sal Canelo, with four catches in this game, 64 yards. Raw um, what's that? Raw chicken. That's what we call him, raw chicken. Yeah, yeah, Sal, Sal raw chicken. That's a, that's a good yeah, one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sal Canelo. Uh, Devion Smith continues to impress, 61 yards on the ground, two touchdowns in this game. Um, you look at total yards, it wasn't far off con considering that it was a, it was a nine-point game. Seattle, 371 total yards. Arlington, 339. Um, again, I talk about winning the running game wins you games. It did not happen here. Arlington had 124 yards to Seattle's 115. Um, the difference in this game was that Seattle exploded in the second half. Uh, 18 points, never trailed in this game. Um, the second half was, was, was less than lackluster. A combined nine points. Um, Arlington played well, if you want to call it that, but just not couldn't get over the hump, couldn't get back in the game despite a nine-point loss. Seattle improves to five and two. Arlington falls to three and four. And to your point, Bill, um, three wins for Arlington does not seem like three wins for Arlington. Um, oh, especially not now. I mean, we got three more. We're, well, we're in week eight, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, we got three more weeks of XFL football before we go into the playoffs. Um, and Arlington is right now on the outside looking in as they should. Uh, next up, uh, we get the Vegas Vipers, who I predicted to be preseason number one team in the league. Uh, they finally get another win here because um, they've been struggling really, really bad. Um, going through a couple of different quarterbacks. Again, traded the way Luis Perez this past week. Um, but let's talk about San Antonio um, because we want to talk about stinkers. Like, if we're going to do it, we, we may do it like a, another power ranking here um, before, oh, yeah. we, before we pick games. Yeah. Um, San Antonio just... I feel like they're trying everything to get the ball going. Um, my key to the game this that I that I said uh, before this past week, 
um, was Jaquez Patrick, and he had 1.7 yards per carry, 20 rushing yards on 12 carries. He did get involved in the pass game. Uh, but Kurt Benkert, who was taken over, we mentioned the former Green Bay Packer, correct? Um, 22 completions, 179 pass yards. Um, I should be, I should mention, uh, because I was very, very bullish on Kalen Balage preseason. Oh, really? Where are you? He's been moved to the injured reserve with his Achilles uh, injury. So he's he was, been shut down as well. He was injured um, apparently from the season start. Yeah. The the bright spot for the San Antonio's team, considering they only scored 12 points, six of them came off of the first kick return in, for a touchdown in the XFL this year. Uh, Fred Brown, two catches, 22 yards and a touchdown, but he was the only – he was he scored the first kickoff return touchdown. Um, I got to mention Landon Akers because he was your leading receiver, six catches, 75 yards. I picked him up on my XFL Fantasy League because I needed a flex spot. Like, everybody on my bench isn't playing, and everybody else in the league is, is rostered. So I had to go pick up Landon Akers to, uh, to to fill out my roster. I do have Abram Smith, uh, to be fair. So I'm six I'm, – I'm, uh, what is it? Where, what was, yeah, I'm six and one in that league. So Okay. Uh, but fair nevertheless, uh, San Antonio struggling, obviously, on offense. If you look on the other side, we get a new quarterback. Um, my key to the game was to Played see well. if – yeah, my key to the game was see if Brett Hundley was going to take over this team, and he didn't even play. Um, I believe he was. He might have been hurt for this game. I can't remember Something. exactly what. Um, but Jalen McClendon gets the start, and like you said, he played well, 21-31, 264 yards, two touchdowns. Jalen McClendon spent his college career in NC State and Baylor. He threw as, for 900 and some yards in his college career. Dude threw for 264 in his first game after being on the team for like four days in the XFL. Dude, he rode the pine in college. He was a backup in NC State, what so he went that? to Baylor. Then he was a backup at Baylor, too. Did you see the game? Were you able to watch I, any of this game? I didn't get a chance to he catch this game, good. unfortunately. He looked yeah. good. Like, he was making decisions. He was throwing the ball crisp. Like, nice passes. He had a cannon. I couldn't even believe. Like, this can't be the guy. I'm sitting there looking at it going, I'm looking like back, like, like trying to figure out what I saw. And I'm like, it's the guy. Oh, my gosh. He was good. It, it might be a too little, too little, too late for Vegas because I mean they've got talent on that roster, um, but there's been a new a new receiving a receiver emerge on this roster. Matthew Sexton, your leading receiver in this game, four catches, seventy two yards. He is thirteenth. He played his college career in Eastern Michigan. He is thirteenth in Eastern Michigan history in receiving yards. Um, so a decent career for Eastern Michigan, but we're not talking Michigan State or Michigan, right, nevertheless. Right. Um, but again, nevertheless, Vegas gets the win here. Vegas gets the win here. Um, if you look at total yards, Vegas dominated 336 to 206. Um, what's surprising to me is that Vegas led in penalties 12 to 8, and we're still be still able to put up, pull out the win. Um, this supports my argument. 90 rushing yards to 30 for San Antonio uh, from Vegas. Um, it was decent back and forth, 19 to 12 at halftime. Um, Vegas scored early in the third quarter, and then nobody scored again. Uh, San Antonio falls to 2 and 5, while Vegas improves to two and five. Um, Bill, you would agree a little too, too little too late for Vegas, right? hundred percent. hundred percent. There's, I don't even, I, yeah, the, the four teams that are on their way to the playoffs are going, they're already set. I believe I don't even, I, I know there are teams that are technically not eliminated yet, but the other teams are better. Yeah. It's I mean, the have not seen the, and the haves and the haves, haves, and the haves we, we know who they are. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to talk about one team that's already locked in because they've already won over half their games. Um, the D.C. Defenders. The problem is, is that the uh, D.C. Defenders went into this game undefeated and lost to the only winless team in the XFL. The D.C. Defenders 36, the Orlando Guardians 37, upset of the year. Absolutely. In the XFL. My team, my team gets Bills it done. Bill's team finally gets in the oh. win column. Before we get and, to talk about how great your team looked in this game, because yeah, they did. They really did. Uh, let's start off with what happened with D.C. because it's not like they played a bad game, right? No, they didn't play bad. They, I mean, their defense obviously wasn't – I don't know if you saw. I, I'm jumping around in my head here because I watched the whole – I mean, I watched it. It was crazy. It was so much It was so much fun. I did watch a lot of it, to be fair. There was, yes. some, there was a ridiculous catch in that game, and I think I texted you and said – I forget the guy's name. Is the tight end for the Orlando Guardians jumped over a defender over his back and snagged the ball from behind him for a touchdown. It was one of the 
it was like the catch of the year, probably. Actually, that one, did you see the Arlington Renegades one two weeks ago where the dude caught it over his, oh, that was unbelievable. Oh, yeah, There's yeah, some yeah. stuff happening in the XFL. If you miss it, it's your fault. But yeah. this was an unbelievable catch. And D.C. just didn't play enough defense, and Orlando found an offense. I mean, it's obviously. And that that offense is called Quentin Dormady. Yep. Dude, um, dude real quick, play. for D.C., Abram Smith continues to be the leading rusher in the XFL. And another 127 yards in this game with a touchdown, 7-point yards per carry. Chris Great. Blair had a had a pretty good catch in this game. An 86-yard touchdown catch where he broke a couple of tackles at like the 40 or 50-yard line yeah. and just housed and it. Speed, five catches. Speed, yeah. yeah. Five catches, 139 yards, and a touchdown. And then your leading receiver for this team uh, did put up two touchdowns. Is did Lucky Jackson four catches, 60 yards That's right. with his two scores. So DC's offense playing well, but like you said, they could not stop the new look, newly found offense. For the Orlando Guardians and Bill, you mentioned Quentin Dormady after being essentially dismissed from the team for for reportedly sharing a <laughs> a playbook with another with an opposing team. Absolutely went off. Gets back and he's like, you know what? You guys want to you guys want to you know run your mouths like it's time for me to show up and show out why I should have uh. been starting for this team this whole season. Um, is Quinn Dormady making a case to make an NFL roster next year? One hundred percent. And I thought about it during the game. I, really? he's, he's big and he can throw and he seems to be pretty cool in the pocket. 100% this guy should get a look for at least a bat, not a starting role. I don't think any of the guys that are in the league are going to transfer to, you know, being starters in the NFL, but should this guy, I mean, I'm a Dolphins fan. If you put this guy on my team, I'd be a happy guy. He, he knows what he's doing. He's, he's athletic he, and he's a big dude and he can throw. It, it was really good this weekend. You could do worse as a backup for Tua Tungvaloa than the former Tennessee Volunteer. Yeah, you, you probably end up playing. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm kind of curious to see. Yeah, no, it is. Um, I'm, I'm I'm I haven't really looked at the the league leaders at this point, but Quentin Dormady's already working his way up into fifth. the top ten. He's fifth. already fifth. Yeah, in fifth passing, in passing. Three, 328 yards, six total touchdowns. That's in four Quentin games. In this game, four games. The leaders have seven. That's that's insane. Yeah, he had three passing touchdowns, three rushing touchdowns. Uh, your leading rusher here, Jermaine Martin, had 52 yards, 4.7 yards per carry. Um, I told you to look out for Devin Darrington because I believe he was the one that had the fumble that cost him the game the week prior. He did. He did. Um, yeah, Jermaine Martin took this job back. Devin Darrington, 1.3 yards per carry, 13 carries, only 17 yards. Um, and then, obviously, your leading receivers, former uh, NFL wide receivers, Cody Latimer and Charleston Rambo leading the way again. Seven catches, 93 yards for Cody Latimer um, with a touchdown. Charleston Rambo had 63 yards receiving on the day. Um, here's here's the difference, what happened here, Bill. Um, you look at total yards, uh, D.C. Dom- DC didn't dominate, but they had almost 100 more yards, 488 to 400. Uh, penalties, um, D.C. led in penalties, 9 to 6. So Orlando, you always talk, we always talk about the last few weeks, Orlando finding ways to lose. They minimized right. penalties this week, so that was they good for them. did, yep. Um, a, another game that refutes my argument that the teams that win the running battles are the teams that win. Uh, DC outgained Orlando in 195 to 91. Uh, the time of possession, I believe, is what happened here because the XFL games are going by quickly because they essentially have a running clock up until two minutes left in the second and fourth quarters. Mm-hmm. Those, the, the clocks are always running. The time of possession, 20 minutes and 90, well, 20.94 to 1506. Uh, Almost, almost an additional. Like I, I don't know the math there because that's just what they put on 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 the XFL app. Um, but but about a fourth more of the time uh, in this game went to Orlando. Orlando controlled the the ball. Like they basically minimized possessions for DC, and that's what helped Orlando propel Orlando to the win. Uh, I'll give you. I'll um, give you what happened. DC led this game twenty two to eighteen at halftime. Um, Orlando. T- oh, did you miss? I'm oh, sorry. Go. I know. I, I was going to tell you. There was one statistic. There's actually a couple of statistics that really hurt DC. And these are the things that were hurting Orlando all throughout the season. DC gave up four first downs on penalties. There it is. That's yep. huge. That's huge. And third down efficiency. They could not get Orlando off the field on third downs. Orlando Orlando made 71.4% of their their third downs, third down uh, attempts. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So um, those two, those two statistics help Orlando sustain drives and score one more point than DC and DC has been a great defense all year. That's been kind of their thing. And then they get on the offense and then they, they grind people out and they run the ball really well and they throw when they need to. And 
they were throwing up. It was all over the park. Like you said, they had more, they had more yards, but Orlando did everything they needed to do. They, they basically played the perfect game and beat the best team in the league. Absolutely. Uh, DC would take the lead with roughly four minutes to go or four minutes into the fourth quarter, 36 to 31. Orlando would respond with a 44 yard touchdown to Cody Latimer. Great touchdown, just, by the way, just under nine to play. And they would hold on to get their first win of the season and again, DC falls from the unbeaten. The last undefeated team is now gone of the XFL, and there are no more winless teams either. DC to six and one. Orlando improves to one and six. Um, you know, it's one of those things that, like, at, we were asking a few weeks ago, will Orlando ever win a game? And I think we actually sort of like joked about it. Like, is Orlando going to be the one to like? How weird would it be if the, the worst team in the league beat the best team in the league? You're not going to believe this. When we were we pick games every single week, you're not going to believe that. This is, I'm being honest. You're not going to believe that I was thinking about this. But we pick games every single week. And just to throw one out, because you're beating me, right? And just to throw one out there, I almost joke jokingly picked Orlando. Because it's like, well, I'm losing anyway. Yeah, so I'll just, just jokingly dark. pick Orla Orlando over DC and then laugh about it when they get absolutely crushed. <laughs> I, I couldn't even do that. I was like, I don't. I knew I was throwing the game away, but I couldn't make myself throw the game away. And here, had I done it, as I thought about it, uh, had I done it, you would have you would have tied I'd look me. Like a genius, I'd look like a you, genius. Yeah, and you would have tied me in the in the standings. We'll get to that here in the, in the yeah. final segment of the show. Um, we got two more games to get to here. Uh, first up, St. Louis Battle Hawks. Um, your, uh, I guess, the second best when it comes to record team in the XFL. St. Louis Battle Hawks get a win over my Houston Roughnecks. Um, Houston is so hot and hot and cold, man. I, I don't know how else to put it. They've lost. It. Um, yep, and it, and it's unfortunate because they started off this season as is um, what could have been the hottest team in the XFL, but yeah. they've obviously cooled off. Uh, when you look at St. Louis, it continues to be the AJ McCarron show. Um, and all they all they listen. They all they tried to give this game away. Uh, Brian Hill had two fumbles in this game, starting running back for the for the for the Battle Hawks. Eleven carries, fifty three yards. He had two fumbles, but he lost one that Houston would scoop and score to make this game a seventeen fifteen. And on the ensuing drive, St. Louis drove down the field, uh, scores a touchdown. Uh, Brian Hill actually gets the two point conversion um, on that on that series uh, to put them up twenty four to fifteen, and they never looked back. Um, so I asked the question a minute ago, with Seattle now the second-best team in the league? Um, Bill, is St. Louis still your number two team in the league at this point? It's so close, man. Seattle Seattle doesn't play great defense. Um, they have won five games in a row. St. Louis lost twice to D.C., and that's it. They, uh, I don't know. It's tough, man. They're, the top three teams are a hornet's nest of teams right now. They Who know They're bouncing off. It, it is who knows what's going to happen going down the stretch here. And then Houston's still the wild card. They still, we know they were really good to start the season. Now they've lost three in a row. So, I mean, I don't know. I honestly have no idea how I would rank these two. We're going to yeah. do it, are we? It's like, I don't know. Um, we might as well man, give it a it's shot. It's so close, right? It, to me, the most disappointing thing about St. Louis right now is the disappearance of Hakeem Butler. Like, I, I, so we, yeah, we sing his catches. praises. Yeah, catches. and he, he had four catches and a touchdown, but he only had 27 yards on him. Darius Shepard. One. I watched him drop yeah. one. Yeah, exactly. That's my point. Like yeah. he was, we were we were saying this guy's going to make an NFL roster this this off season, and you were saying Darius Shepard. Yeah, well, I was, but Darius <laughs> Shepard steps up and has had a couple of really good weeks, and um, that's probably to me the most disappointing about St. Louis. Um, but I mean, how disappointing can he be in a five and two team? Uh, when you look on the other side, you. Listen, I I said last week that Cole McDonald was going to get the start. I did not realize it was because Brandon Silvers was injured. Injured, yeah. And you said that Cole McDonald was trash before, and he was he was garbage in this game, like a hot, like you know the garbage juice that you're afraid is going to leak out of the bag on your Ooh, way from the can to the that can stuff outside. Stinks. Yeah, that's that's what the Cole McDonald we got in this game. Fifteen completions for 106 yards. Um, Brandon Silvers was interviewed on the sidelines, and they said Cole, he he said. Cole is more more uh, athletic than I am. That's why he's running the ball more. He did have eight carries for 40 yards. Um, but even Max Borgie is starting to disappear. Bill, what's what's wrong with Houston? Oh, well, Max Borgie had nine carries for 46 yards. That's awful. I, I mean, it, it, one of them was a 23-yarder. So other than yeah. that, it was pretty, it was pretty bad. Um, they're just 
I think they're getting a little bit exposed. They they were really good on offense to start the season. Those four games, they we thought they were the best offense in the NFL. And that's gone away. And that's how they were winning games. So they have to figure out how to get that back. Brandon Silvers has to be a better quarterback. He has to come back. He has to be un, uninjured and be a, be a better quarterback. Max Borgie was never great on the ground. They never had much of a running game. It was more Brandon Silver. So I think that's what needs to what needs to happen again. They need to find that match again on offense. That'll be okay. Do I think they're going to beat any of the top three teams in the playoffs? No. No. Yeah. Looking at some key stats here, uh, total yards. Houston actually, believe it or not, outgained St. Louis, 288 to 281. Um, the penalties killed them, and Houston had six to St. Louis is two. St. Louis was more disciplined. That, that yeah. helped propel them to the win. Uh, the and States, once again, man. The third game this week that has – well, the second game, I guess, this week that has proven me wrong about rushing yards, Houston outgained St. Louis 136-66 to 66 on the ground and still lost this game. Fall to 4-3, and three, like you said, have lost three games in a row at this point. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's bad. You know, Bill, I'm, I'm going through it. I said that was, the third, that was the third game where I was wrong. It was. I did not realize we've already gone through all four games from last weekend. I think um, you could you can amend your statement, Ryan. I think I, th- I don't think you necessarily have to win the rushing battle. I think you have to be just like the NFL. We see it's football, right? So you have to be balanced. And, and teams that are, you know, scoring a lot of points, they're going to usually have a balanced team. Even Orlando had a balanced attack this week. Yeah, which, I mean, Martin was pretty good on the ground, and that that's. Uh, I think you just have to have a, You need to have a running game. It just can't be you know, pass, 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 because that's, they're going to, they're going to load up, you know, they're going to throw a whole bunch of corners out there and a bunch of defensive backs and try to stop you from passing. So I think, I don't, I don't think you can keep standing on, Oh, you gotta have, you gotta win a Russian battle. I think you just have to have balanced offense. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the best way to put it. You have to be able to threaten the run. Yeah. 100%. In order for the, in order for their passing game to, to take off. And right. that's, that's obviously something that the teams that generally struggle to do win, except three of the four teams this week that won the rushing battle, lost the games yeah um bill like i said i didn't realize we were already going through all four games that's how that's how quick we got through them because that's how much fun we were talking about them super before fun. we before we take our final break and get into what to look out for in the xfl in week eight why don't we why don't we do for fun a uh, power rankings here of the all xfl right. uh you want to start at eight again like we did last time start at eight yeah you want to start at eight? eight all right eight all right all right give me give me your number eight team in the xfl san antonio Brahmas. yeah it's it's hard to say that they're not, considering that they they've got two wins. Um, but yeah, San Antonio is the worst team in the NFL. No I'm right there with you. They have no offense. Yeah, uh, if you go to number seven, I would normally say Arlington, but you still got to give it to Orlando. They got a they got a, a really good win against DC. I agree. Um, but if unless they win this week and prove that last week wasn't a fluke, um, because they play a pretty bad team this coming week. Um, then, then we're still going to put him at number seven. Bill, yep. he, he got at number six. Wow, that, it's tough. I think right now, as they play, I think, I think Arlington is probably the six. They're pretty bad right now. They're pretty bad. Yeah. I mean, they're they're just they're on a, a massive downswing. They're not winning games. And they're the best. They're 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 the the best. They're the worst three win team in the XFL. Yeah, yeah. We said that. Are, we said that two weeks ago. They were the worst yeah. three win team in the XFL, and they're still the worst three win team. They just they cannot win now. They can, yeah, they're not bad, winning. Another bad offense. Yeah. So well, that was six. We're at five at this point. That's where we got to put Vegas in there, right? Even though Absolutely. they've got a worse record, um, they they seem to find something with with Jalen McClendon last week. So we're going to put him at five. Yep. Um, and that gives us a top four in the XFL, which is pretty pretty self explanatory. Uh, so. Who's who? We got at number four. Houston Roughnecks. Yep, absolutely right. If they don't get their offense going, right. they might be the one team that's that's in jeopardy of missing the playoffs if they don't get their offense together. I don't know who's math like who can mathematically knock them out. Is it Arlington? It's probably Arlington. Which you're is... looking, yeah, you're looking at the South. So two teams from the South are going to make it. So it's in the South. You've got, um, yeah, you've got Vegas. No, no, no. I'm wrong. Yeah, Wait, no, I got right. you. I got it's, you. I, it's, I'm it's Houston, Houston, San Antonio. <laughs> Uh, Arlington and Orlando. And wow. So, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It would have to, it would have to be Arlington because um, this is not listen, fair. This Orlando, is not fair. Orlando? Have to, this you can't do this to the XFL. That means one of these teams, the DC Defenders, the St. Louis Battlehawks, or the Seattle Sea Dragons, will not make the playoffs. Yeah, 
it's that's just the, XFL, the way it is you now. can't be doing this you can't be it can't be two and two <laughs> they've already just got to go top they've already got to just got to go like no divisions like the acc in basketball just yeah. top, I, you know. i'm speechless that is awful if if you end up with a team like right now arlington renegades over the seattle sea dragons or the st louis battle hawks or the dc defenders they would be in the playoffs over one of those teams that's a travis i'm a huge xfl fan they have screwed this up you know i don't i i have to look at the matchups but looking at records alone, that means that Orlando is not eliminated from the playoffs yet. That's, I, they said that if, this week. If, they if won everybody the game, still screws up and Orlando wins out, they could make the yep. playoffs. Yep, because they're only sitting two games behind Arlington. So if they if they win out, they would end up four and six. And if Arlington and San Antonio have issues, they can make the playoffs. And oh. does anybody want Orlando in the playoffs right now? No. Yes, no, no. We do. <laughs> As fans, we do. Yeah. But, but I nobody, do. <laughs> Nobody in the South wants Orlando in the playoffs. All right, so we got Houston at four. Bill, I'm going to go three uh, because, well, no, we're going to disagree from three and two because my, be number, tough. Three, my number three team in the XFL is going to have to be St. Louis. I think Seattle, I know you say they struggle on defense, but I've, I've got Seattle at two, man. I just, I, their offense is clicking. They, they're just hot. Like teams that make playoffs and make playoff runs. I mean, look at UConn in the NCAA tournament. Yeah. Um, teams that get really hot uh, tend to make big runs. And so that's why I've got uh, St. Louis at three. But I'll I'm guessing you're going to go. go with, no, I'll go with that. I'll All go right. With that. So then we'll agree Seattle at two. And then obviously the six and one uh, DC defenders at one. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I still think you got to leave DC up there. They lost by one point to the worst team in the league. Okay, fine. But it was one yeah. point. They still put up 36. And you know you you go fix the issues that you had against uh, against Orlando, and you come out stronger next week. Yeah, listen, you play. That's why you play the game. You don't you don't just put the game on paper and see what happens. That's why you play the game, Bill. We're going to take our our second and final break. When we come back, we are going to get tell you what to look out for in the XFL Week Eight, give you the schedule, and tell you some players to look for on each team. So stay tuned to find out what's coming up this weekend in the XFL when we come back right here on Tap Outs and Touchdowns. Everybody, we are back, and we are here talking XFL Week 8. Uh, some decent, decently fun matchups. It's um, not bad. It's not it's, bad. It's, it, you know, it, it could be worse. I mean, we, we just got mentioned... got some intrigue. There is definitely some intrigue. Before we get to the best game of the weekend... Which is the Sunday night football game? Let's start off on. Well, look, before we get before we get into it, we should mention uh, last week's picks. Bill beat me. Bill, we, I think we. You know what? You can see that I'm still old school. If you're watching the YouTube feed, uh, Bill went three and one, while your guy Billy Rye went two and two. So, with you look at the standings, Bill is now eighteen and ten on the season. Billy Rye nineteen and nine, so only one game ahead of Bill in the pickums. Um, but I digress. Um, the most intriguing game would be the Sunday night game, but let's start off the Saturday game. Is it? Is it? Let's, I don't know. I let's, don't let's, know. Let's, let's talk go about why here. there's a whole bunch of intrigue this week. I, I agree. Let's start off with a Saturday 1 o'clock game. The Vegas Vipers taking on the 5-2 and two St. Louis Battle Hawks. Um, Bill, I'm going to give you my players to watch out for for Vegas, obviously, is Jalen McClendon. Um, I'm going to agree with you. Fair. Yep. Yeah. The new quarterback here in Vegas, 289 total yards, two touchdowns last week in his start. Uh, for St. Louis, um, I mentioned um, Hakeem Butler's been a disappointment. And so if you're looking at, at who's going to be that guy that A.J. McCarron can depend on, it's Darius Shepard. He's the new number one receiver in St. Louis all of a sudden. Um, Bill, I'm taking St. Louis to win this game for obvious reasons. Um, give me your players to look out for and who you got in this game. Well, I, I, for me, uh, I think I'm going to agree with you. It's McClendon for the Vipers. He obviously had I, – I talked about him. I was I was enamored. He yeah, he played way better than I thought he would play coming yeah. from Baylor uh, with just no statistics in college. made no sense to me that they signed the guy, but clearly they knew something. I don't know who's scouting and what, what league he was playing in. You know, he was throwing his, the ball to his sons. I, you know, I don't even know if he has sons. I'm just saying. He was out in the parking lot throwing it at the Walmart, and they're like, look at the, the cannon on that guy. And he comes to the, and plays great. So let, let's leave it at McClendon. That was a lot to talk about. Uh, and at the same time, Vipers can't play defense. They can't play rush defense. They can't play pass defense. They gave up 121 yards on the ground per game. So make my guy from St. Louis, Brian Hill. He did fumble twice. He's got to prove it game. 
So he's got to he's got to make it happen in this game against the Vipers, and I think he's going to do well on the ground. And I, I I said weeks ago I thought the dude was a stud. Now why this game has intrigued me is for St. Louis, it is a prove it game altogether. Vegas is playing better. They're upstart a little bit. They've won a couple games. They started the season what zero and four. Yeah, zero and four. So. Yep. Now they're two and five. They've got a quarterback that's playing pretty good. And now St. Louis, you have to prove that you can beat these teams that shouldn't even be there. So St. Louis has to make it happen this week. And that's what makes this one pretty interesting. So who are you taking in this game then, Bill? Because listen, the I think the difference here is going to be, be the Louis. crowd. Yeah. It's got to be St. Louis. They're in St. Louis. You got to beat Vegas. You got to make that happen. You cannot you cannot fall to five and three. So you have to be six and two coming out of this week. To, really to give yourself an opportunity to make the playoffs, as crazy as the two and two thing is going to be. The sat the, the the there's a solid chance that St. Louis is going to put over thirty two thousand people in that stadium for this game for sure, and that's going to be the difference. That's yep. going to be the difference for this team, and yep. that's why I'm taking St. Louis, and that's probably part of why you're taking St. Louis. Yep. Uh, next up, the second Saturday game this weekend, the three and four Arlington Renegades taking on your one and six Orlando Guardians, a four o'clock kickoff in Orlando. Now we talk about crowds that should not be much of an have much of an impact. We're talking about the worst uh the worst attended games or the worst attended team in the XFL in Orlando. Bill. Oh, no, uh, the second you, worst. Don't don't throw the down there. The Vipers, yeah. It's, yeah. Um Bill, give me your players to watch out for and who you got winning this game. Well, on the Orlando side, Quentin Dorvity's got to be the guy. Got to be the guy, right? Yeah, he absolutely lit up the scoreboard. So we're going to watch him again this week. That is the quarterback for the Orlando Guardians. He is going to be on an NFL roster if he continues to play the way that he did or has been the last couple of weeks. On the Arlington side, I think the lookout is going to be where is Luis Perez? Is he going to play in this game? Are we going to get you know who is going to be the quarterback for the Arlington Renegades? I would like to see it be Luis Perez. I think that gives the Renegades a chance, you know, going down towards you know the the end of this season. They need him because I think in this game, Orlando beats them in Orlando because Orlando looks suddenly looks scary. Um, yeah, listen, I've got Orlando win this game too for Arlington. Uh, for Orlando, I'm right there with you. Quentin Normandy had over, had over 300 total yards last week, six touchdowns. I don't think anybody has, has uh, counted for that many touchdowns in yep. a single game yep. in the XFL. When Arlington, you mentioned it's the Luis Perez watch, but an added wrinkle. Uh, former Clemson quarterback, former Missouri quarterback, tried oh, out this for one's WWE. Great. This one's great, yeah. Yeah, he tried out for WWE over the weekend. Obviously, it didn't happen because he was signed by the Arlington Renegades, and that's Kelly Bryant has signed with the Arlington Renegades. Right. So now, are are we are we going to stick with was it Banker, uh, um, or are we going to go Luis Perez? Uh, Banker's Banker's on the Brahmas. Who so tell, tell me? Tell me Arlington. Who's it's, oh, it's, it's Drew, Drew Plitt. Plitt. Drew Plitt. Yeah. So does Plitt get another start? Do they roll with Luis Perez, or does yeah. Bryant do enough in practice this week to find the field? Um, but if McClendon it's for- did it, McClendon did. It. We had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and he and he showed out. So who knows? Kelly Bryant's a good player. Yeah, it's it's quarterback watch for the Arlington Renegades in this game. Fun. Um, and, here's the and, other thing, Ryan, that makes this one really interesting. And, and when does this game start? This, this is an interesting. It's start a four time. o'clock kickoff. Four o'clock on Saturday. Yeah, so it's not a late game. They've been playing late games on Saturday. This time they're going to play a four o'clock. So it's literally like a like a, a Sunday NFL you know slate here, one and four. So that's what they're going to do on Saturday here at the XFL. But what what makes this one really interesting? We talked about it. The Orlando Guardians are still eligible to make the playoffs. Who is in that second spot in their division? The Arlington Renegades. Orlando has to beat Arlington this week to even have a shot. And amazing, I can't believe we're saying that. They lost six straight games to start the season, and they actually, if they win this game, will only be a game back of the Arlington Renegades for the last playoff spot in that. That's crazy. Yes, that's true. Yeah, it's um, it's wild to think about. Bill, I'm going to go off topic here for a second. So, um, seeing that uh, that Saturday game is so early. Uh, any interest in going to the um to the Greenville Swamp Rabbits game on Saturday? The reason I say it is, <laughs> is that it's the Tropics night. It's the Tropics night. night. <laughs> the Flint, Michigan Mega Bowl. The Flint, Michigan Mega Bowl. You know it's who? Flint, Michigan Tropics night. I love it. You know, Greenville you know, I'm in for that stuff. I'll have to find out uh, what's going on. But yeah, I, I of course I would have an interest in doing that. I mean, that, that's my thing, man. I love it. I, I listen. I, I've 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 said, and I, I'm sorry to get off topic of football here, especially on on a football show. I've said it all year that like at some point I'm just gonna have to cave 
and treat myself to I a know. Swamp Rabbit jersey. $130 later or some ridiculous. Yeah. If they have a, a Flint Tropics like jersey. They'll have something. They usually have something for their their nights. They had the the like the replica uh, Irish ones for the yeah. Uh, but yeah, for the for St. St. Patrick's, Patrick's Day. Day, yeah, yeah. I I may have to cave and and just like be like I'll have buyer's remorse for weeks, but I don't know if I could pass up a Swamp Rabbits Flint Tropics jersey. That's yeah. Talk 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 to the wife. Let's see if we can make this happen because I want to go. Yeah. Um. That hey, being said, what's up? I just I just noticed something. When did Paxton Lynch end up on the San Antonio Brahmas? Oh no, that we I have, I need to check Twitter to see when when that trade went through. So Paxton Lynch is no longer with Orlando. Is that was that what you're saying? Not even correct. It's not even breaking news because we're late on it. Correct. Um, yeah, no, that's um, that's interesting news. So Paxton Lynch is officially gone. Um, There's no news whatsoever on. I mean, of course it's it's uh, XFL, so nobody's really. Oh, here's what happened in XFL. It was six hours ago today, so we're recording huh? this Wednesday. Hey. Uh, the XFL Communications Department, six hours ago on Twitter, transaction. The San Antonio Brahmins have claimed quarterback Paxton. They Lynch waved the Orlando him. Guardians. They waved him. <laughs> they waved him. Paxton Lynch has now been benched and waved in every major football league within North America. That's dude coming to the USFL. He's he's already been he's already been benched in the USFL. Uh, do need do needs to go get a coaching job, and that's. Listen, Paxton Lynch, you are doing something I would never be able to do. I'm five foot seven, over two hundred pounds. I am not as athletic as I was in high school. I can honestly, I would never be able to do what you do. But at this point, you can't do what you do. No, like all, all love to you, man. But <laughs> so awful. Maybe, you just maybe said that out loud. <laughs> maybe he, listen. Maybe he starts for San Antonio this weekend as they host wow. the four and three Houston Roughnecks Sunday at three o'clock. Our first Sunday game. Um. Bill, I'm going to go through my 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 players to watch out for. Obviously, now it's it's kind of changed from San Antonio to see if Paxton yeah. Lynch gets to start in San Antonio. But let's start with Houston here. Um, four and three Roughnecks. I'm going with uh, William Likely. It's a, not a name that you're probably thinking about because he's not an offensive player. He is a defensive back that had a fumble return touchdown last week. That fumble that that Brian Hill lost was returned by William Likely. And we mentioned Houston's defense is not good. Um, I'm looking to see if William Likely can sort of Build off of that momentum and have himself a decent day for that Houston Roughnecks defense. For San Antonio, again, we just mentioned Paxton Lynch. Let's let's see if Paxton Lynch um, starts for San Antonio this weekend. But um, Iowa State wide receiver Landon Akers, I mentioned him earlier in the season or earlier in the show. I picked him up from my fantasy roster. Um, six seasons. He played for six years at Iowa State. Um, led the team in receiving last week. In 48 games at Iowa State, 38 receptions, 593 yards, and a touchdown in his college career. Um, but listen, there's not really much else to talk about here in San Antonio. And that includes with the new newly signed Paxton Lynch. Um, give me Houston to win this game. San Antonio uh, will fall behind Orlando in the rankings this week as Orlando will beat Arlington and San Antonio will lose to Houston. That will put San, or, that will put Orlando one game back from Arlington um, but with a with a real chance to make a playoff push after starting zero and six, Bill, yeah. give me your players to watch for in this game. And who you got between Houston and San Antonio? Uh, for San Antonio, I have nobody because they're terrible. I'm Awful. serious; like Awful. they're terrible. There's nothing yeah. good, and they're playing a very good Houston defense, and they are terrible on offense. I, I mean, if I'm if I have to pick somebody, if Kurt Bankert can get his you know figure out anything with he's been bad. Uh, you know, Jack, obviously Jack Cohen, they've, they've had, they've run a whole bunch of different quarterbacks through that offense and Banker didn't look good this week either. They're terrible, man. They have no running game. They have no receiver. It's terrible. It's really bad. So I, I really didn't, I looked at San Antonio and I'm like, ah, I don't really like anybody on that offense. Like it's no good. Um, on the Houston side, Brandon Silvers, where are you, man? Get healthy. Let's go. You got to get, you got to get the magic back. He's still third in the XFL in passing, even though he missed a game. So get it back, Brandon. Get back on the field. Get the, uh, the the magic going again for Houston. We got to see that team start to play better. And, and I'm going to take Houston in this game, regardless of who plays quarterback, because San Antonio is just that bad. San Antonio is just that bad. And to me, the most intriguing matchup of the weekend features terrifying. the number one, and, this number one, is one terrifying. and number two teams in the XFL. The D.C. Defenders, 6-1, and one, traveling out west to Seattle 
to take on the 5-2 and two Sea Dragons. The Sunday night football game, I will find a way to watch this game because I don't think there's anything really going on TV right now that would prevent me from going to watch this game. Uh, mm-hmm. Bill, D.C. and Seattle, um, give me your players to watch and uh, who you got winning this game. I think on the Seattle side, I love him, man. I <sighs> You know what? I'm going to steal your thunder. I'm going to have fun with this one. I love Ben DiNucci. I love him. I think he's great. Apparently, he has like a little fan club that travels around and and like hangs out with them after the games and stuff like that. Like Ben really? DiNucci had, yeah. There, there was some, I saw some pictures of the Ben DiNucci group going on the field. They all there's like everybody's trying his helmet on and stuff. It's crazy. Like he's the coolest guy. I guess the, ben, no the ben DiNucci boys. Yeah, exactly. But I, I'm going to. There's a running back to sign with the CLC Dragons this week. You were stealing knew, my thunder. You I knew I was going to steal your thunder. I'll let you do it. I'm going to stick with Ben DiNucci. Okay. I, I'm dude. He's the best passer. He's not. I'm sorry. He's not the best passer in the XFL. He is the biggest gunslinger in the XFL. He's the most fearless quarterback in the XFL. He leads the XFL in yards by. Hang on, let me look at it. Over 200 yards. That's 1770 to 1540. Approximately, there's a couple you know yards in there, yeah. But he throws interceptions 12, 12 touchdowns and nine interceptions. Most of the guys are at the top, like AJ McCarron, who is the best passer when it comes to scoring. He's thrown four interceptions to 17 touchdowns. So Danucci has to limit the interceptions. That's why it makes it fun to watch because he slings it all over the field. Uh, on the DC defender side, my favorite player on that team is Lucky Jackson. He really is. I, I love that guy. And you've got your running back there, he's a, he's a monster, but Abram Smith, dude. Yeah, he'll, Abram Smith will be I, on an NFL roster this offseason. Like, they, there's no way he doesn't get signed. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah, he's he's been really good. But I say it every week. I think the most fun guy to watch on this team is the most athletic player that, and the guy that does the most for this team, and that's Jordan Tamu. You got to yeah. watch him every week. That guy, he's their quarterback, but he runs, he throws, he has a really good arm. He does miss throws from time to time where you're like, ah, but he did throw an 86 yard pass this week. That was a slant that the guy took it for a touchdown. Yeah. He's, he's the most fun player to watch, I think, on that team. All right, who you got winning this game between the defenders I'm and terrified. the Seahawks? You know, I would like to see the Seattle fans show up for this one. They claim that they love their Seahawks, but apparently all they care about is the Seahawks because they have not been supporting the Sea Dragons very well. I think that's unfortunate because I know a lot of I, I lived up there for a lot of years and I know a lot of their fans are posers anyway. So as soon as that team is bad, they don't support them anymore. But, you know, when they're really Band good, everybody wagons. wants – I'm telling you, when they're really good, everybody wants a ticket. And then, you know, all of a sudden when they're bad – I used to have season tickets to the, the Seahawks. And when, when they were really good, I could sell my tickets for like $500 a piece. When they're bad, you can't get anybody to take them from you. You know what I mean? Oh. It's like, yeah. Bill is so, so in fire. Just saying. I'm just saying. Right I lived up there. I'd Calling love to the see fans their fans. Of this fans I would love to Seattle, see their fans. Washington, Washington, just while Washington. that's happening, I would say it right. Well, while that's happening, let's go. I, I hate to do it. I'm gonna pick the DC defenders in this game. Oh, you, you're a traitor! All right, let's I go am. with my stuff real I quick. Am. I hate to do it. I want, to see, I want the Sea Dragons to win this game because I want the Sea Dragons to make the play. I told you, Ben DiNucci is like my favorite player in the league. Right? He's so much fun to watch. He's crazy, but I think DC wins this game. Yeah, for DC, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned the the eighty play, eighty six yard touchdown pass. That's the player that I'm watching this week. Chris Blair, a monster week last week. Yeah, um, Chris Blair, he was good. Over 100 yards receiving, a touchdown, the 86 yard touchdown to be specific. And you mentioned, I appreciate you not taking my thunder. Like, legitimately, thank you. I mean, you. I wanted to because he he played for my team last, I think, in the NFL. Yeah. So, with the news that Morgan Ellison would not be returning this season, I sent season, this to you too. I you remember did. I got this was mine. You did. But I, I let you have yeah. it. Yeah. Well, all, all credit belongs to Banker Bill. <laughs> Bill is the one that sent me this information. Um, with the, with the news that Morgan Ellison with the injured reserve, uh, Seattle's looking for a running back. And they turned to former Pro Bowl running back, Philip Lindsay. Uh, he had a, a few really good years. He was an undrafted free agent that, that made a Pro Bowl career out of it in Denver. Played a little while, I believe, in Indianapolis and in Miami. Um, newly signed over the weekend for the Seattle Sea Dragons. I want to know if they're going to just throw him into the fire, um, especially against the best team in the XFL. Um, Bill, I wrote all of my win, all of my teams that I had winning down like three days ago. Um, I'm taking Seattle to get the upset. I think Seattle capitalizes off of what they saw from that Orlando game. Um, I think Philip Lindsay comes in and is an immediate impact player. And I've got Seattle taking this game uh, from DC, uh, and that would tie them in the North Division at six and two. 
uh, with DC. And, and honestly, if we do power rankings again next week, that would make me make name Seattle as the number one team yeah, in the XFL. 100%. 100%. They take down DC. They, they move up to number one. Yeah. Um, Bill, I've got an announcement to make before we sign off, but before I do that, uh, would you like to, uh, would you like to tell everybody, anybody, anything about your, your iRacing league that happened over the past week and, and what you got coming up this coming weekend? Yeah, just, just keep checking it out go to, you know, facebook.com in the zone racing. Uh, you look for the logo. It's, uh, it's kind of like a checkered flag with an ITZR on it. Uh, or you can check them out on YouTube, In The Zone Racing on YouTube, or you can go to InTheZoneRacing.com because we do have a pretty cool website where we have all our sponsors listed, all the racing results and stuff like that. But every Monday and Tuesday night we're live. You'll hear me chirping about fake racing on there, and it's 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 pretty fun. We have a good time. Tuesday was a good race, um, and they, they did some interviews with the guys that, that were involved in the race afterwards. The, the guy thanked his mom. Uh, yeah. yeah, they said it was the first guy thanked his mom. It was really fun to watch. And um, to listen to, like, I, I think it was the same guy that thanked his mom that was, uh, it might have been the other guy, I can't remember the names. Um, but he was, there were so many, there were so many uh, cautions because there was just people, uh. you know, getting up into other cars. But it was a fun race to watch. I mean, listen, it's, uh, it's you could, you, there's there's worse things you could do on a Tuesday night, right? 100%. 100%. Uh, go, go check out In The Zone Racing. And before we sign off, uh, pretty big announcement. Um, it should be going, if, if you're listening to this before, like, the morning time, I like the like mid morning time on Thursday. Um, it may not be out yet as far as social media goes. Um, but if you have been paying attention to social media, I have been doing a lot with Michael Davis. Uh, Drop the mic podcast of Out of Pocket with Michael Davis on Tobacco Road Sports Radio. Um, we've we've done some wrestling talk here and there on uh, on on Tap House and Touchdowns. Um, we were approached and we have accepted uh, the task of doing a Carolina Panthers podcast. Uh, this should be done weekly to bi-weekly, uh, probably closer into the season we'll be doing it weekly. Um, but we just came up with a name for it uh, on Wednesday, and we should be starting it next week. I'm not quite sure all the details yet, uh, but be on the lookout for The Cat Cave, a Carolina Panther, Panthers podcast. I'll try to say that five times past. Carolina uh, Panthers podcast. No, The Cat Cave, a Carolina Panthers no. podcast. We are we are cave a Carolina Panthers podcast. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's a lot. Yeah, you you did it right. Um, we are excited about what we're going to be doing with the Cat Cave. Um, we are we're going to be on a different network uh, as far as pushing that uh, the audio out. Um, I believe we're still going to have some video on a YouTube channel somewhere. When I get more details about that, I will definitely be sharing it on social media. Uh, but Michael Davis and your guy Bully Rye are going to be doing a Carolina Panthers podcast starting next week so we're pretty excited to be getting started with that um anybody who knows me knows that i i I like the detroit lions but i grew up a panthers fan most of my yearbook pictures from my senior year in high school i am rocking my jake delome jersey and that is a shoot folks as 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 far as wrestling terminology goes they ain't a work that's a shoot brother um bill this has been fun man appreciate you being here we went a little long again but uh i appreciate you being here absolutely man thank you for having me as always Folks, uh, thanks for st- thanks for sticking with us through the, the little long episode. Uh, coming up next week, PJ, Steven, and I are going to be reviewing a classic spring stampede. So stay tuned for that. Um, and then again, a cat cave, uh, or the cat cave, I'm sorry. I, I can't even get it right. It's my own show. Uh, the Cat Cave, uh, the new Carolina Panthers podcast by Mike, Michael Davis and myself will be coming to you next week. So stay tuned for that. Um, And then more XFL and NFL talk from Banker Bill and I on the football show here next week. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. For Banker Bill, it's your guy, Bully Ride, for Tap House and Touchdowns. Thanks for being here tonight, and I'll be around.